right, here we are. And the machine is gonna last for five years. First question, and the maths has already stumped me. Locate the extreme point of the product space. Oh, 9 a.m.s suck. They genuinely do suck. So, um, let me get up my schedule for today, and I'll show you guys what I have on. And this is my timetable for this week, and you can see I've got class at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 3 p.m. But with the 3 p.m. class, there's a bit of a problem. And the problem with the 3 p.m. class is basically I have football training at the same time. So do I go to football or do I go to my lecture? I've just had a look at the top end. I don't even know if I'm gonna make the selection now, so I need to eat really quick and get a move on. Mm. In 10 minutes, Jesus. All right. It's time to cycle to the first lecture of the day. Structure and regulation of financial markets. You're about to see the big 9 a.m. stream of people going to uni. My legs are tired. This is just the beginning of the early morning 9 a.m. rush. And we've made it just in time. Four minutes till the first lecture of the day begins. I probably should get a move on. Um, Since it's at 9 a.m., attendance is probably really low. My housemate does this subject, but he's not here. All right, here we are. Today's lecture was all about capital markets, a bid ask spread, and we was also kind of looking at how insider trading, although illegal, is kind of good because it helps assets converge to their natural value. The more informed traders in this market, the more efficient the market is. So my 9 a.m. is done. That class, wow. I literally had zero clue what was going on. I was trying to take notes and he went so fast I couldn't take any notes. SRFM rewatch. Alright, so now that I'm awake, I'm basically gonna set up a to-do list for today. So all the work I want to do today. This is my plan as an economic student for today. My next lecture is principles of corporate finance in an hour. So let's get cracking with some work. Now the first bit of work I decided to do was um, some work on the economic history essays I have to do for bubbles, panics and crashes. So each seminar we bring um, essay question plans to the seminar and then we kind of go through them in class. And you can see here I was copying down some notes from one of the seminar questions which was What was the role of fiscal policy in exiting the Great Depression in the 1930s? The answer is fiscal policy only really played a role in the US for the Great Depression. All other countries basically had so much debt from war, they basically couldn't use fiscal policy, only monetary. And then it was time to go to my next lecture, which was in the biology building. I think I would have to say this class is one of my favorites. So in today's lecture, we was actually kind of doing more accounting type principles. We, we kind of looked at the income statement, we looked at the, the free cash flow, like net present value and loads of formulas. And we looked at convertible bonds a bit. Heading to town to get some um, bits now, uh, real quick. My day as an economic student today has been a lecture at 9am, library at 10am, lecture at 11am, and now I'm in town. I basically had to come and get a few vitamins and stuff like that, but I copped the maddest shirt, right? So I was in the charity shop just having a look, and I saw this shirt for six quid. Oh, my dude. I'll show you it when we get back. I've still got an economics history lecture today. I need to go get some food. I need to organize my life 
and put down a plan of all the work I need to do. If you want to do well in economics at university, you have to work hard. You have to work like that level of hard. Put your heart and soul into it, you know what I mean? A few inches later. Uh, oh, I can't be bothered to go to my lecture. Uh, no. I don't know if I can be bothered to go to my economic history lecture. Because I got up so early to go to that other lecture, I feel so tired now. Pros of going to the lecture, basically next to the gym. Cons, intense. I mean, if I stay at home and just watch lecture capture, nobody has to know. I'm staying home. Um, also, this evening there's an alumni talk at the York Economics Department. Should I go? It probably would be pretty interesting. Can I be bothered to go? Definitely not. Alright, so it's time to watch the um, economics history lecture that I'm missing right now. I've got a bit of a snack and I'm ready. I basically kept waking up in the night and then having a 9am and waking up in the night isn't good combination. That Marmite is looking a bit disgusting as well, Jesus, oh. When the evening comes. So ladies and gents, I just caught up with my my econ history lecture. Basically, we're currently up to the point where we're learning all about the Great Depression. I have an exam in January for one module, the one economic history module I'm taking. All of my other exams except dissertation deadlines uh, in um, the June period. So you can guess, um, I've been focusing kind of most of my revision recently on bubbles, panics and crashes, the history module. Honestly, I would normally go to the lecture and I would normally go to the gym after the lecture, but today I'm just feeling quite tired so my day is probably going to end with me relaxing in here. Basically here is a to-do list, university work from a while back, and if you can't see there's a load of stuff on there. Um, I've done some of it. Next up we're going to look at industrial economics seminar 2. So let me get the book out. Uh, this is a lovely way to end. End the day in the life of an economic student. Now, I was saying earlier, like, even though econ's not my passion and I don't want to go straight into it, I do not regret at all choosing an economics degree because it's almost changed the way I think about everything. Like, just the way I value stuff changed. If I want to get into, like, business, economics, private investing, like, the knowledge I now have from this whole degree is very, very useful. And even the economic history modules, right? Knowing about the past and knowing about, I don't know, all the different things that have gone on, they do make you feel very smart. And, um, and once again, like, I actually feel kind of smart now that I've done this degree, which kind of gives me confidence in myself. You know how it is. Now, this economics module, industrial economics, very similar to micro, a bit of game theory, a bit of, you know, monopoly, oligopoly, how do they price stuff and everything like that. If I can actually turn this page, you'll see kind of some of the notes I've been making. Durable goods, maximum profit, a lot of differentiation in this subject. Also, if you haven't already dropped a like, please do it now. I basically messed up my day to go to a 9am. I didn't want to go to to show you what a 9am would be like. Repay me in love and likes and comments and I don't know. Honestly, anybody who thinks it's worth going to 9am's or does go to 9am's, let me know in the comments down below. I'm actually interested to hear what you guys have to say about them. You can see right here we're tackling problem set two. Now question one is about product differentiation. There are two firms, supply differentiated products, locate the extreme points of the product space. Honestly, I have no clue what product space is. So um, this might be a skip straight to the solutions type thing. But I hate doing that, but otherwise I spend years doing a question. Consumer preferences are uniformly distributed over the product space. Something like this, you just instantly know there's gonna be some sort of differentiation involved. I'm either having a blank or I'm just stupid. Oh, is this the hoteling model? What? I'm gonna come back to you guys once I make some progress with this problem set and let you know how it was. First question, and the maths has already stumped me. I understand the intuition, but basically, right, if this is here, do we treat this modular sign like a bracket? So would the minus times minus theta become theta? Or do you just ignore the modulus bracket and ignore that minus and leave this as minus theta? Oh, I think I finally got it. I think I got it, Jesus, I'm, I'm silly sometimes. If they'd have just labelled the variables, I would have got it straight away. Small things sometimes these guys, these lecturers can do to help massively, they don't do it, I don't know why. Half an hour in, and we're on question two. This was an exam question last year. Consider a Stackelberg, which is basically a sequential game where 
the leader sets a quantity and they, they then determine what the follower, the other firm in the market will do based on their decision, the Stackelberg original decision. So yeah, have a go at home, let me know the answer and I'll put it on my paper. Now just before I sign off on today's video guys, if you have enjoyed a day in the life of an economic student because it's late outside now, it's, it's time for bed soon, I'm going to do an online Tesco shop because I can't be bothered to go to the shops and carry about 10 bags home like this and then, uh, you know, my day's over. It's been a rough day as an economic student today. Um, recently I've just been really feeling the in, intense workload and the pressure to kind of stay up to date and everything like that. So I really am trying to stay on top of things, but I'm just not. But as is life, I'm sure in a few weeks it'll be all rainbows and, you know, I'll be back on track and it'll be happy days. For now it's rough. My brain, I don't know, like... I think I know a lot of my friends in economics are feeling the same way like we're just going to class and it's like well what what just happened and I think that's definitely the case for many people like me and my friends who some of us aren't the most academically motivated or academically kind of that way inclined but for some people I'm sure it's probably easy it's a BSc in economics and finance baby so yeah make sure you subscribe down below leave a like on this video now oh this week I'm doing a mad long study with me I reckon I'm probably going to do a 15 hour study with me just to catch up on all the work I've been missing recently. So um, subscribe down below and yeah. So yeah, have a look at the clothes I was talking about earlier. I picked up from a charity shop a Thomas Burberry shirt, you know, original in London, six quid. Um, Thomas Burberry's the guy who invented Burberry. I also got like a very nice, perfectly fitting blazer for 10 quid. Very nice grey kind of smart thing that I'll wear to r the races or anything like that and then just some some casual plain chinos and a decent jumper which just feels so nice and I got it because of the cotton